A dramatic and unique research mission is underway in the icy wilderness of Norway's Svalbard archipelago. Researchers are firing tranquilizer darts at polar bears from a helicopter in order to take fat tissue biopsies for the first time. What are the objectives of this research and how can this help in stabilizing bear population as their sea ice habitat continues to shrink due to global warming? Our next report brings you the details. With one foot braced on the helicopter's landing skid, a veterinarian lifts his air rifle, takes aim and fires a tranquilizer dart at a polar bear. As the bear slumps into the snow, a team of researchers swiftly descends from the chopper and collects vital samples of fat and blood. <laughs> this dramatic pursuit is a part of a pioneering research mission in the icy wilderness of Norway's Svalbard archipelago. For the first time, scientists are taking fat tissue biopsies from polar bears to study the impact of pollutants on their health. This crucial research comes at a critical time. The Arctic is warming at an alarming rate, which is four times the global average. This is putting immense pressure on polar bears as their sea ice habitat continues to shrink. We are facing major climate change, particularly in the Arctic and especially in Svalbard. The decline in ice is absolutely dramatic. And the polar bear is an endemic Arctic animal that uses ice, particularly sea ice, to move around, feed, hunt seals and reproduce. So the disappearance of sea ice is likely to have significant consequences for spatial ecology, including the way bears move around and understand their environment. Once the fat and blood samples are collected from polar bears, each sample is sealed and labeled before the bear is fitted with a satellite collar. Scientists say that while the study monitors all bears, only females are tracked with GPS collars since their necks are smaller than their heads. This is unlike males who can't keep a collar on for more than a few minutes. These meticulously labelled samples are then analysed in a makeshift lab set up on the Norwegian Polar Institute's research vessel. There, scientists expose these samples to controlled doses of pollutants and hormones. About the slice method, which involves cutting biopsies of fat taken from bears into thin slices, the idea is to represent as accurately as possible what bears experience in the wild, but in a laboratory setting. To do this, we use their fat, which we expose to the stresses they encounter, that is, pollutants but also stress hormones. The analysis of the fat samples has already revealed the presence of significant levels of PFAs, which stands for per- and polyfluoroalkyl substances. These synthetic chemicals, which are used in industry and consumer goods, linger in the environment for decades. And this one is ready. Then I just... Surprisingly, despite years of exposure to these pollutants, Svalbard's polar bears showed no signs of ill health. The polar bear population appears to be stable, even showing a slight increase. This contrasts with concerning declines seen in other Arctic regions. Scientists believe the key to this resilience may lie in the bear's changing diet. As sea ice diminishes, these predators are increasingly turning to land-based food sources like reindeer and even eggs and seaweed. This season alone, the research team captured and examined 53 bears, fitting 17 of them with satellite collars to track their movements. They also deployed health log cylinders on some females to record vital data like pulse and temperature. 
this innovation offers an unprecedented insight into the daily lives of these predators. Polar bears were once hunted freely across Svalbard, but since an international protection agreement in 1976, the population here has slowly recovered. However, the rapid pace of Arctic change presents ongoing challenges. For the moment, at least, the bear population in Svalbard is not declining. There are no obvious changes due to climate change. The population is fairly stable or even increasing very slightly. This does not mean that climate change will not have an impact on these populations in the future. This vital research is crucial in understanding how these magnificent creatures are adapting and what the future holds for them in a rapidly warming world. First post now available in nine languages on YouTube. English. French. Le FMI. German. Hindi. Indonesian. Italian. Japanese. Portuguese. Spanish. Go to settings. Click on audio track and select the language of your choice. Be the first to know what's happening around you in your first language. First post.